I'll give you a brief, uh, brief rundown uh, of Olympic Gold Quest. This was a dream that Prakash uh, and I had had uh, many years ago. Uh, we both have been through the through the whole process of, uh, of, or rather, the whole struggle of making it from a district level uh, sports person to having, uh, you know, won uh, world world titles. And we understood, and we have we understand the the the, the tough situation which our athletes, which our sports persons in India, have to go to go through to achieve their full potential. And we have figured out that financial resources account for a very significant part of this journey of, a, of an athlete to achieve his full potential. Especially when you achieve in a benchmark range of 0 to 10, when you arrived at 6, it's that last 10% or 20% uh, benchmark performance or the improvement in that performance requires huge doses of financial inputs be it for uh, equipment, be it for, you know, exposure, international exposure, uh, your own personal trainer, your personal, you know, uh, mind trainer. There are a lot of needs which are not fully uh, uh, been given by, by the, the necessary federations or by government support. And I think Olympic Gold Quest was a result of that dream to basically bridge this gap, the gap between what an athlete really needs to achieve his full potential to win an Olympic gold medal and what actually government is willing to, to offer. So we, we are not in clash with government. We are just coming in to support government initiatives, to support federation initiatives and we, uh, we come in and, and plug that gap. Uh, uh, so, so that really is what Olympic Gold Quest is all about. Um, uh, Prakash and my and my dream was fairly stagnant until we got members from the corporate world into, into our myths. And uh, initially it was Shitin Desai, Ramraj, who came in with their vast experience, uh, you know, of the corporate world, of how, how to run organizations, how to run businesses. And we gained a lot of momentum. Subsequently, uh, Rakesh Khanna was, uh, 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 came into the picture. And then Neeraj Bharadwaj came in along with Gautam. And I am very, very pleased to, uh, to welcome uh, Neeraj Bajaj, who of course needs no introduction. He is, uh, he is a legend both as a sports person and as an entrepreneur and as an industrialist. In fact, amongst this whole group, I do believe that he is a legend from both, uh, both the worlds, or the industrial world, uh, a corporate citizen and a sports person. So a very warm welcome to him. It's a pleasure to be at a sports event after maybe 30 years. Uh, I had, uh, uh, I was thrice national table tennis, four times national table tennis champion a long, long time back. And I, uh, possibly some of the best years of my life was playing table tennis for India. And uh, uh, it was always, for all these years, it's always been there in my mind that uh, sport has given me so much. Uh, in my younger days and I must give back something to the sport and it's always the issue of how to go about doing it uh, once 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 I was part of the Bajaj family the Bajaj group and you know one gets busy and uh, uh, I must say that uh, this thought was always in my uh, mind what can I you know how, how do I give back to sport and of course all of us recognize how Depressing it, it has been over the decades our Olympic uh, performance, and in some ways, you know, it has really been shameful uh, over the last so many decades. So when I saw what uh, what really the I would say the two icons of uh, of sport in India, Prakash Padukone and uh, Geet Sethi, and when they uh, we talked about this and how they along with very, very, what you see here, uh, they may or may not be have been top sportsmen, but the kind of commitment, the kind of discipline, the kind of systematic plans they had, to, and, and they have seen it all, of uh, producing uh, uh, really Olympic champions and Olympic medals. Uh, I was very, very enthused, and so I'm very happy, very committed to be part of uh, this group. I think we've identified six sports, you know, which had mentioned in the... Uh, previous press meet, uh, athletics, wrestling, boxing, shooting, 
and archery. Uh, these are the six sports which we have identified and uh, you know planning to uh, help athletes. Um, I'm also happy to announce that uh, we have identified one badminton player, uh, Guru Sai Dutt, who is uh, you know, the most uh, promising uh, uh, youngster in the Indian badminton today. He is uh, the gold medalist at the Youth Commonwealth Games, which was held in Pune, and uh, also the bronze medalist of the World Junior Badminton Championships, again, which were held in Pune. Uh, I think he's a very uh, promising uh, youngster, and I've seen him personally. Not just, uh, he's not only one of the talented, but also very committed. And, uh, you know, we've gone into all, all the entire aspect of his uh, career and uh, decided to support him. And I'm sure, uh, you know, that in the very near future, he'll uh, produce uh, good results for uh, Indian badminton. And currently, he's uh, training with uh, Gopi Chand in the Gopi Chand Badminton Academy based in Hyderabad. And we welcome uh, Guru Sai Dutt uh, on our OGQ. Uh, uh, one more announcement. Uh, we've been having a discussion with the, the Boxing Federation. Kishan Narsi is here, and uh, uh, we are pleased to announce that Sanjay Kolte. Ko you pronounce it Kolte, right? Kolte. So uh, Sanjay uh, uh, Kolte is uh, is being adopted uh, by OGQ as well, and we will be supporting him uh, uh, definitely up to the Commonwealth Games, and then you know. Uh, on, onward from there, and uh, so this is our, our first initiative with uh, with boxing. Uh, we are very very pleased. India has done uh, exceedingly well in boxing, as you are all well well aware of in the Olympics. It uh, forms one of the six sports that we have identified, and we are very pleased to uh, to have uh, Sanjay Kolte in our midst.